My name is Lizzie Herrera, Program Associate in the Horticulture Department for the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture, and in this video, we will show you how to build your own Venturi-style injector. This type of injector is a nice way for small-scale growers to chemigate, which is when a chemical such as fertilizers or pesticides are applied through an irrigation system. This allows for the product to be applied more precisely and evenly to your crop. Another benefit of a Venturi injector is that it doesn't require electricity to operate, like some other types of injectors do, making these inexpensive and easier to set up. Venturi injectors come in all shapes and sizes, but are designed to use your irrigation system's water flow to create suction that draws a fertilizer solution into the main water line. It is very common to see Venturi injectors installed on a bypass assembly, which allows for less restriction and greater control of adjusting your pressure. There are many different injector sizes depending on the needs of your operation. In our example, we will be using a Mazzi injector that is designed for low flow rates between 0.17 and 0.48 gallons per minute. It is common to see low flow rates such as these in high tunnel systems. It's important to select the right size injector based on the flow rate of your irrigation system in order for the Venturi to create enough suction to work properly. So be sure to test your irrigation system to select the injector that's right for you. Now, we will head on over to the Fruit Research Station where we will show you how to build your own Venturi injector system. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Thomas Zimmerman and I'm a program technician for Dr. Amanda McWirt. And today we're gonna to be kind of looking at a Venturi style fertilizer injector setup. Uh, this one here, we are set up as a bypass system. We've got garden hose coming in from a regular hydrant uh, to an adapter. On this is all three quarter inch PVC up top, what you see here. And then we have it a T here coming out with a pressure gauge on this side as well as this side, same, same setup. But this will tell us what our pressure difference is in uh, once we get going. Uh, on this tee here, we have reduced down to a half inch line, and then we've got ball valves on either side of it so we can turn the system on and off. Uh, down here, we have two union uh, couplers, and this way, if something messes up on, on one part of this or another, you know, you can separate it out. Uh, it just, uh, you don't have to have these, but it makes your life easier if something breaks later on down the road or needs replaced. Uh, in, in the middle here, we have the Mazzy. Uh, 283 model injector um, and then it comes through up to this side and also on this ball valve and then up here just another three quarter inch ball valve exiting out into a, just another regular garden hose to our strawberries as you, uh, behind us into just a standard uh, drip irrigation line. So now I'm going to show you all how we can put this together uh, inside here in just a minute. Uh, some things you're going to need uh, some Teflon tape uh, you know, stuff's pretty cheap. Uh, just some PVC glue and PVC primer, the purple stuff that turns your hands different colors. And then you're going to need some three-quarter inch PVC for this setup. And it, the sizes can vary on what you're doing, but we're, today we're going to be going into like just a normal garden hose you would have at your home. So we're going to be having three-quarter inch PVC and PVC parts and fittings, and then we're going to be reducing to half-inch parts to the fertilizer injector. All right, so now we're going to start by building the bypass part of the uh, fertilizer setup. And so this injector I have right here is a Mazzy injector. Uh, the model number is number 283. It's their very low flow model. Uh, it's as low as you can get because our, our setup we're going to be using this on is, is very low flow. Uh, but again, they make bigger models if you've got uh, more, more area you're trying to do or more flow. So. Very, very uh, different models you can use on that as well. So we're gonna start by uh, just threading this on and getting this together so we can go into the half inch PVC. So on this injector, it has male uh, national pipe threads on either side of it. So to start to get this to the PVC, I've got a female coupler. It's got female threads on one end and it's got a female uh, slip glue in on the other. So I'm going to start by just putting some Teflon tape on this uh, injector. That way it doesn't leak whenever you're out in the field. Also, uh, it's important to know that it, these have a flow direction. So on this way, I want to start because this is going to be going towards the hose. 
uh, the arrow is pointing that way, so I'm going to start by going this way with it. And when it gets tight, you know, you can use, uh, I've got a couple of wrenches here. And when it gets tight, you know, you can just grab it and give it a couple turns. You know, you don't want to over tighten these parts, especially since they're plastic. Uh, they are easy to crack. So, you know, just, just snug it up a little bit. And that's, that's kind of how you start it on that end. And we'll do the same on the other once we get going that direction. Uh, now we just want to start getting, we're going to start gluing and, and priming stuff now. So uh, we've got a little piece of um, half inch PVC, you know, cut it to, you know, it doesn't have to be real long, it just has to be long enough where these parts will slide in together. And so you need that little bit of room to work with. So now we just want to prime these ends of it before we glue anything. Set that to dry for just a minute, and then you're going to want to do the same thing on the inside of this coupler. You know, coat it with that purple primer. And all this does is just makes the glue uh, set better. Uh, does what it says, you know, it primes the PVC. And you're going to want to give that just a second to dry. Doesn't take real long. And the glue I'm using today is just the same brand, uh, just some wet set PVC cement glue. Uh, this kind, they make different kinds, but this kind is medium bodied and very fast set. It's the blue kind. Now that you got that, you just take it and push them together. Give it just a little bit of a turn and push hard and hold it for just a second and make sure it's set. And then you should be good to go. Uh, just let that set up for just a little bit. Okay, now so that we've got that glued and it's it's sitting off the side dry, we're gonna keep working our way up up this setup. So what I have here is a half inch union coupler. And the, the nice thing about these, if for some reason that injector ever fails or you need to fix it or replace it or whatever, um, these, you know, they screw together. They've got glue ends on both sides, but they come apart just like that. And that way, since all this is going to be glued together, you know, you can't, once you glue stuff, you can't take it back apart without breaking it. So this allows you to, to remove parts of it without having to, you know, put a whole new thing together. These aren't necessary. They're a little bit more of an expensive part. Not too bad for this size, but as you get bigger, if you do different things, you know. Uh, but you spend a little money up front like this, it could save you potentially down the line doing a whole new thing. So don't need it, but nice to have. But this, on both ends of it, it has a, their female glue in it on both sides. So we'll just prime, prime the inside just like we did a second ago on the other side. Um, and we'll prime this end of the PVC on this side as well. And I'm going to do that off to the side here on the cardboard so I don't make too big of a mess. So we'll go ahead and let that uh, dry for a second. We'll go ahead and prime this other end that will go on this side of the coupler of the union. And that way it's, it's already starting to dry as well. So we've got both ends of that uh, primed and looking good. Letting it dry and we'll go ahead and get this elbow. Like I said, I'm gonna try and, and probably prime most of this end of it. That way when I start gluing, it's, uh, it goes pretty quick. Okay, so that's about as far as I'm gonna take it for now, priming stuff, letting it all dry. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and start gluing before we get up to the three quarter inch. All right, so now that we've got the half inch uh, part of this build complete and drying, uh, what we'll do next is we'll start, we'll take this up to the three quarter inch stuff. So this will be the top of it. This, this valve right here will be the shut off. This is what will give you control as far as how much water and pressure is moving through your venturi later on. So to do that, we're going to have to have some uh, bushings and these are half inch to three quarter inch bushings. So what we'll do is that this will end up going through this. This is a three quarter inch T glue in on all sides. And so this will sit here and this will slide into that. So this takes this three, three quarter inch T uh, size down to a half inch glue in 
which we'll glue right onto the half inch stuff here in just a second. So we'll need to, to go ahead and just prime everything like we have been. Um, for this, you'll have to prime the inside of it, which that will go onto the half inch, and you'll have to prime the outside of it that goes inside the three quarter inch T. So we got that all primed and ready inside and out. Our half inch PVC from before is already primed and dry. So we'll go ahead and let this part dry for just a second. And we'll go ahead and start priming the inside of this T. Okay, so now that we got our T and our bushing here primed and ready to go and dry, uh, we'll go ahead and glue all this together. Hold it for a second and make sure it's fairly straight in the direction you want it to go. Because you want everything to go this way on it. So you don't want it turned uh, at an angle to make it your life harder later on. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and prime the pieces and everything that will connect this together. Because we'll do the same thing we did here on the other side of this as well. So we'll go ahead and do that first and then we'll connect this all together. So now, when uh, everything's primed and ready to go, go ahead and start making our way across with, uh, with glue and parts here. So with these unions, what you can do here, and uh, this will be even something you can do later on. Um, this part right here, you know, that screw, it screws, it uh, comes loose. And this allows you to work around this a little easier. So that part right here comes off. And so if some, say you had this break later on, you could save this. And this would be fine so I had to replace all this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this side of this union off as well. That way it's a little easier for me to work with. Again, just comes loose. And once you get this out in the field, you're gonna to wanna to put one of those wrenches on it and tighten it just a little bit. Cause all it has to seal it inside is just an O-ring. Um, I'll show you here in just a second. Uh, right here. They have little O-rings inside of them that seal. Okay. Now that we got this part separate and easy to work with, we'll go ahead and put the reducer bushing and T onto this end as well, like we did earlier. Shirt sure snug, hold it for a second. And make sure it's the direction you want. Again, we're going for this horizontal line here. We want everything to be fairly straight. Okay. Now we're going to bring it all together with this piece right here. So we've got everything primed and ready. So this is going to connect to this side of it. And this ball valve will connect to this other side. Right here, just like that. And then our other piece here will be able to screw back in with these unions. All right, so now that we've got all this put together, uh, we're gonna start working on the inlets and the outlet sides of the setup. And so I've already got all our parts uh, primed and ready to go on this side. So we're gonna start with a piece of three quarter inch PVC coming out, uh, and another three quarter inch T right here, get all sides primed. And then we'll come out with another piece of three quarter inch PVC on this side. And then we'll come out of that piece with a uh, female three quarter inch to male uh, pipe thread. Um, and then after that, this piece right here is a uh, three quarter inch pipe thread swivel 
to a three quarter inch uh, hose, hose bib thread. So this will just screw right in once we get there. And this will screw right into your hose for your inlet water to come in. And we'll also be adding a pressure gauge on either side as well into the T here in just a second. But we'll go ahead and start gluing it on this side and, and start working our way down it. So this one I want to have facing the other direction compared to the others because uh, later on we're going to be adding a pressure gauge right here so we know how much pressure we're pushing out through our system. Okay, so now we're going to add the next piece of PVC through to a T. We'll just go ahead and glue it on. Now let's go ahead and get our uh, pressure gauge in in place. So what you're going to need for that is one of these uh, bushings. It's a three quarter inch to half inch, uh, just like we used here, except this one has got threads on the half inch side of it. And that will come into play because we've got another bushing here. It is a galvanized uh, metal bushing and it's got half inch threads that will screw into this and quarter inch threads on the top. And that is what our pressure gauge will screw into when we get to that point. So now for this part, we're gonna go back to our uh, Teflon tape since it's all gonna be thread on thread. And we're just gonna give this a nice little layer to screw into the top of that bushing. And now we can go ahead and screw it into the top of this uh, T. And again, just like earlier, don't make, make sure you do not cross thread. And now we're gonna to have to use our pliers to go ahead and tighten it down. Okay, feels pretty good. So now we're gonna add another layer of Teflon tape to the end of our threaded pressure gauge here. And again, I just got this pressure gauge at the local hardware store. I think it was like five bucks. So, you know, it doesn't have to be nothing real, real fancy. Once you got your layer of Teflon tape, go ahead and screw this into the top of that bushing. Now to finish this side off, we'll go ahead and we'll add Teflon tape to the male thread of the last uh, piece we glued on to the PVC. And then we'll take our uh, hose adapter and we'll go ahead and thread it on there and this side will be finished. Alright, so now we're just going to do the same thing that we did on this inlet side to the outlet side and it'll look pretty well the same. The only difference will be the end piece. Uh, coming out will be the same thread on this side, the female thread, but this side will be the male hose bib that will screw onto the other end of our hose. But this can be adjusted to whatever your setup is. Okay, so now that we've got it all put together and glued and everything, we're gonna go ahead and let it dry. Uh, and different glues require different times, so just read your can of whatever glue you use uh, and let it properly dry if you do any kind of pressure testing. But now that it's dry, we're gonna go ahead and take it outside and, and pressure test it and show y'all how it works. Okay, so now we're about to do a test run of this uh, injector setup. Obviously, if you were doing this for yourself, you would have it in a more permanent uh, fixture or setup. But for today, for our demonstration purposes only, we just kind of got it tied up here just to kind of show you what it does and, and when it's turned on. So as you can see, the ball valve up here up top is, is wide open as, as well as the two on the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the water on and it will not start injecting because there's no, there will be no pressure difference here. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. And you can see on either side, uh, both pressure gauges are reading an identical amount of pressure. Now, you'll notice as I close it, uh, the pressure difference will change. And you can see the water will start beginning to suck up through the injector. 
and you can hear it as well. So you can hear it pulling through it uh, and you can see it's kind of hard to see but there is water getting pulled through it currently and there's and you can see the pressure differences on either side so if I go ahead and I can open this valve back up you'll hear it or uh, it'll quit it'll quit sucking anything up so now the pressure has bounced back out and there's nothing going through the injector at all uh, I just want to thank all y'all for watching today and I, I hope that y'all were able to learn and, and figure out a little bit about this uh, Venturi style injectors. Uh, if you have any more questions or any, want to find out any more information about them, uh, you can contact your local county extension agent and they'll be happy to help you. Thank you. Sign up for our Arkansas Fruit, Vegetable and Nut blog and stay up to date on information from our specialists on all things related to horticulture production in Arkansas. Special thank you to the Southern Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program for their support of this project. Thanks so much for watching.